Warframe had a very successful last year. I think nobody can deny that. Especially Whispers in the Wall ended 2023 on a high note. And while most of us are still busy exploring the Entrati Labs, we've already gotten a sneak peek into the next big Warframe update called Dante Unbound. The dev stream just ended, so in this video, I'm gonna give you a rundown of all the new info that we got, everything that we can expect, and trust me, there is quite a bit to unpack here. So, after a huge shout out to all our generous channel members, let's jump right into it. So, the first thing out of the way real quick, Dante Unbound launches in March. We don't have a specific date yet, but I'm sure this will come, maybe also in the February dev stream where we will get more details on everything that we're about to talk right now. Before we jump into all the new content and also the new Warframe, there is one big topic that I want to get to right away because I'm super duper duper excited about it, and that is, even though they denied it in the past, Enaros will finally get a rework. I love the guy, even though he's objectively the worst Warframe in the game, and they are finally giving him the rework that he has deserved for so long. But what exactly can we expect here? Well, what Pablo said is that due to the fact that in contrast to Hydroid, the usage stats say that he is still played frequently, what they're gonna do is they're not gonna make him like a zero to hero frame like Hydroid. They wanna tweak his abilities more like subtly so that he doesn't get super overpowered, but they acknowledge the fact that while he is pretty much unkillable until level 200-ish, his abilities are mostly not used because they don't synergize well and they're simply not useful. So I think he's not gonna be completely revamped. He's gonna retain pretty much his kit, but they're gonna tweak it in a way that the skills become actually useful. One thing that Pablo did make clear though is that Inaro's first skill, you know, where he tosses sand into the enemy's eyes, will probably not change all that much because the whole gameplay mechanic of finishing enemies that are open for finishers by the first skill, that is still gonna be there. And we're gonna get an indirect buff to Inaro's because they said that in general, melee finishing animations and how you approach the enemies when melee finishing, that's gonna be streamlined. As for the rest of his kit, they didn't specify anything yet, but I am super Super curious to see what they're gonna come up with. How about you? Put your opinions in the comments down below. I'm sure there are quite some of you out there who are super hyped about this rework too. Next, and this is also something I'm really pumped about, we finally get an ability to create Tau Forge Archon Shards out of normal Archon Shards. So if you're really unlucky with the drops, then wait for the new update and you will be able to get some of the big boys out of the small ones. Now, the way that it works is pretty straightforward. You can take four normal Archon shards of the same color and then fuse them into one Tau Forge one of that color. Going forward, this possibility of melting down small Archon shards into Tau Forge ones, right? This will become more and more attractive as we get more and more of these shards. Next, Warframe Mobile. I was actually really surprised how far in the development this already is because even though they didn't make a big thing out of this, Rebecca said that in the upcoming weeks already, we can expect the official launch of Warframe Mobile for iOS, with Android probably following sometime later this year. Now, I know that everybody who plays Warframe right now, including me, already has a platform to play this game on, and there's probably not that much need for us to actually get the mobile version, right? But in general, I am super, super pumped about Warframe Mobile being published because I just see the insane potential of how many new Tenos this new platform integration could probably bring into the family for all of us to play together with, get into clans with, trade with, just because of how big mobile gaming actually is. But all right, let's finally get into why you're probably here. And that is what exactly can we expect in terms of brand new content coming with Dante Unbound? Let's jump right into it. First of all, we have the brand new Warframe called, well, Dante, what a surprise, right? Dante is gonna be designed in a sort of scholar, librarian type of theme, and he is going to have an exalted weapon of the tome type. You know, the book type weapon that was introduced with Whispers in the Walls. Dante is gonna have an exalted tome, or an exalted grimoire if you so desire. 
I personally think this one is going to be quite interesting because of all the Tome mods that we got, which have some great buffing potential, but also were not that much great because the Grimoire itself was not that much of a strong weapon when it came to damage output. So if I imagine a Tome type exalted weapon that maybe potentially hypothetically is actually really strong, then especially those Tome mods that require you to actually get kills with the thing, right? Those might be a bit more viable and or easier to use. Now, while we only saw concept art at this point in time and no actual gameplay footage of the guy, what Rebecca did say is something about his abilities. From what I understood, we can expect Dante to be a heavy caster type Warframe who's gonna cast a lot of skills. His second skill is sort of gonna be a magic spell from his book that has something to do with life, probably something healing or whatever. The third skill is also gonna be a magic spell from the book, but this one is gonna be supposed to deal damage. And then his fourth ability will have a different effect depending on the order of which you casted his second and third skill. I am super pumped. We're gonna get more info and probably some gameplay or ability showcase in the February dev stream, so stay tuned for that. And while this is all the info about Dante himself, there is definitely more that comes with this update. For example, here's two new signature weapons. These are two new Incarnon weapons, and they're called Ruvox and Onos. The Ruvox are gonna be a fist-type melee weapon, but if you activate the Incarnon type, it's gonna change from a fist melee weapon to a claw melee weapon. That's really interesting. And the Onos is a secondary weapon that is gonna be on his one hand, like the Epitaph, for example. But if you activate the Incarnon mode on this one, it's gonna turn into an arm cannon, like, for example, the Bubonico. Now, they did say in terms of melee stances or uh, different mods regarding primary, secondary, whatever weapons, they're gonna work in on this, they're gonna figure it out, but I am really curious to see how this whole thing is gonna play out in the end, and if we may be able to get some crazy broken synergies out of this, simply because of the fact that you can change a secondary into a primary weapon, one melee into another melee type, and as to how to obtain the new Warframe and weapons, we don't know anything yet, but they did say that they're gonna bring the disruption game mode into the new Entrati tile set, but with a twist. Since they said with a twist, this kind of sounds like there will be a specific disruption type game mode that is new and that you're probably from this game mode gonna receive all the new stuff that you need for the Warframes and the weapons, kind of like mirror defense, because when Citrine released, they also said we have a new defense mission, quote unquote, with a twist. Also, because the Entrati Labs tile set is so beautiful, we get more tiles for this tile set. You know, more room types, some more visual variety. We saw a couple sneak peeks and work in progress snippets in the dev stream, and they look definitely already very interesting. So if you like this tile set, you're gonna be very happy to see more of it in the future. And we also got a sneak peek at a very funny new enemy type called the Gruzzling. This is the new enemy type from the Murmur faction and it's gonna be sort of a loot goblin type of enemy. They did say this one is supposed to steal your loot from you, so you wanna take care of them right away. Let's see how it's gonna play out in the long run. Also launching with Dante Unbound is a new deluxe skin and this one, you've also seen it in the thumbnail, is for Styanax. I personally always liked Styanax's gameplay but his visuals were, to me personally, pretty underwhelming. And with this very Aztec style looking new deluxe skin, I think I might give him another shot because boy, this, this looks so insanely beautiful. The design team have really outdone themselves on this one again. Also, as we were initially talking about the Inaros rework, there is another Warframe that is going to get a, well, rework might be a little bit too much, but a little tweak, and that is Mirage. See, Mirage is very well known for her skill Eclipse that can either give you a damage bonus if you're standing in the light or a defense bonus if you're standing in the shadow. But it is always super inconsistent as to where actually light is and where shadow is and on some tile sets it's outright broken where you're standing in the light and it still says you're in full shadow. It's just really inconsistent and this was one thing that bugged me the hell out about Mirage which is also the reason why I never play her. I simply find it too inconsistent and don't like it. Now, the devs did acknowledge exactly that, and they're currently having a forum poll in the Warframe forums up on what we think how they should fix it. So we can go there, share our opinion, and they will listen to that and act accordingly in the future. Basically, what they offered is either they don't change the functionality at all and tweak it in a way that actually it does work without any bugs. 
However, to me, what sounded more interesting is the fact that they also offered to instead go and change it to a toggle in where you can actually maybe by switching your Warframe's energy color, right, change it so that you can decide whether you want to have the damage or the defense bonus. I personally think this one would be my favorite, but you know, if you have some ideas, you can go to the forums and check it out. If I can find it, I put you the link in the video description. But one thing they did mention, and they made it very clear, Mirage's Eclipse is the most frequently used helmet skill in the game. And making it so that we can just have a toggle for a big damage buff, they said that would be too strong for the helmet. So in case the decision was made that actually we turn it into a toggle where you can decide whether you want to go for damage or defense, they would nerf the effect for the helmet skill to sort of balance that out and not make it absolutely overpowered. Also, I would super duper appreciate it if you could maybe drop a like because it helps the video and the channel out a ton. So big cheers for that. And now let's look into some more stuff that we can expect with the Dante Unbound update. Now, Dante Unbound will not only feature new content, but also a whole lot of technical improvements, optimizations, and just in general, more polish for older types of technology in the game. First of all, the new lighting engine that, as of right now, is only present in the Entrati Labs tileset, which also makes it look so good, right? This one is going to be step-by-step -step rolled out to older tilesets as well, starting out with the one place that we all spend the most time in, our Orbiter. We've seen a little sneak peek at how the Orbiter looks with the new lighting engine, and I personally think this one is a massive visual upgrade. With the new lighting, Warframe gets a breath of fresh visual air. Another big quality of life improvement that I'm super happy about is that if you play the circuit in Duviri and maybe there's a host migration and you get kicked out or you have a connection issue, you're not gonna lose all the progress anymore. The progress will periodically be saved so that you don't lose everything. I think this has been long overdue and I'm happy that it's finally gonna come because now the circuit is gonna be a lot less dangerous and toxic. Next, and this is a super big one. Like it seems small, but bro, this hit me right in the heart because I've been on the receiving end of this run for like 10 years already. And that is, if you run around a corner, you do not get stuck on all the types of corners and little boxes and everything anymore, right? We've all experienced it. You run around a corner and then you just get stuck on the corner and you don't know why and it's just, it just feels so dumb. I hated it. And after 13 years, right, they finally fixed it. You can look at it. You can finally run around a freaking box and not get stuck. This will be such a big quality of life improvement. Now, the only thing that's left is please make door frames in a way that you cannot stand on top of them anymore, okay? Please make it so that you just slip down and go through the door. That would be the next step, but I'm not going to complain. This is really huge. One thing that's also really huge is big optimization for Warframe clients that work on lower end hardware. If you have a slower PC, maybe a laptop, or you play with a Nintendo Switch, then these loading times are now going to be drastically reduced, meaning that in certain cases it can be that the loading times for getting into an open world, for example, on Nintendo Switch, would be cut in half. Another nice visual improvement that's coming with a new update is fur shader improvements. Now, our Kubros are actually gonna look really fluffy and fuzzy and nice. Not sure if they're also gonna do it for Kavats. And speaking of animals, you can now also hug the lab animals in Albrecht and Trati's laboratories. Next, and this is probably especially nice for newer players, they're gonna clean up the weapon stats as they show up in the arsenal. So they're gonna go and streamline the way that it is displayed, having only the really important stats show up. And if you wanna see all the other stuff, this is gonna be hidden in a sort of drop down menu so that if you wanna see it, you can unfold it. But if not, it's not gonna obstruct the view. And maybe we're also gonna have some more tooltips explaining what those stats actually mean. Also nice for new players is that the Fortuna Syndicate system is not going to be as grindy anymore going forward with lowered resource requirements to level up the Syndicate. And now let's also quickly talk about Soul Frame. Even though it was just a couple of minutes, Steve was there to also talk a bit more about Soul Frame. Nothing major happening there, but they did show some new assets. They did show that they added a new bow type of weapon, which is going to be a primary weapon. So there is going to be bows. There is going to be crossbows. They added some new enemy types, a new sort of enemy faction. It showed a new bear type of creature, which is also going to be added to the game. Some new surface textures and materials. Just some assets showing, see, the game is growing. We're going to add more stuff to it. And as far as I'm concerned, 
I'm really looking forward to seeing what they're going to come up with once it finally releases. Also, if you haven't already, then absolutely check out my crazy Red Crit Gauss Prime build right here. Another massive thank you to Niels V, Lamies, Demon Lord Zell, Demon Emperor, Emperor Prime, Nos Linux Gaming, Archaic Lycan, Turtle Peer, and all other generous channel members for your continuous support. We see each other, hopefully in the next one, and until then, as always, good loot.